Oxygen Blast Technical Seminars are an Intertech production. For instructor-led.net, Java, and XML courses, visit us at www.intertech.com. Well, folks, welcome back to the second half of our talk on RESTful Web Services, in particular RESTful Web Service implementations using JAX RS. Again, my name is Jim White. Okay, before we begin, folks, I'd like to address uh, a couple of questions that came up uh, just before our break here. I was able to take a look at our Q&A. We won't be able to get to all of them here during uh, the start of our second half, but I'll try to address a couple of them quickly, and then we'll address some of the others at, as our conclusion of our talk today. And those questions that I don't get a chance to address here while we're all online, I'll address in uh, both our Intertech blog site as well as our, our LinkedIn site. And by the way, again, slide materials, downloads will all be available at our Intertech website, uh, and you also have access to the complete recording of this talk. Dan McCabe has informed me that that will be uh, sent out to you in email and be made a part of our, I think, of our LinkedIn site, if I'm uh, if I'm understanding correctly. So let me address a couple of questions here before we get going and uh, talking further about JAX RS and about the Jersey implementation of JAX RS. My first question comes from uh, both Thomas and uh, Dale had questions about um, security. In particular, can uh, HTTPS uh, be used uh, with uh, RESTful Web Services? And uh, also, is there a way for us to secure things like our RESTful Web Services? Well, gentlemen, and to all, uh, the, uh, the reality is, well, yes and no. In fact, we'll talk a little bit about that towards the conclusion of our talk. Uh, things like HTTPS can certainly be used. Uh, you can secure the pipe just like you can secure the pipe around any kind of web request, but now also you're putting a little bit of a burden on both your clients as well as potentially on the back end if there's some sort of uh, data decryption you need to do. If you're looking to try and secure little pieces of the RESTful request, in other words, not not to, uh, if you will, encrypt the whole message using something like HTTPS, but maybe encrypt little bit and piece, then again, most of that, at least today in this early day of RESTful Web Services, in particular in Java, is going to require a few of the homegrown solutions to address that. We'll talk a bit about that at uh, our conclusion of our talk as we talk about some of the pros, cons, and issues in adopting RESTful Web Services. So uh, both Thomas and Dale, great questions. You can hit upon one of those issues to which uh, RESTful Web Services does have concerns, at least to, to this point in time. Uh, certainly we expect a lot of changes there. But as RESTful Web Services aren't adhering to any standards, at least not yet today, then that is certainly a concern. Um, got a question from uh, Kieran about the difference between JAX RS and uh, RESTful Web Services in an implementation like Jersey versus the rest of the style. Well, the first uh, first issue with regard to uh, deciding which might be in for you is whether or not they live by specification. Again, JAX RS is uh, driven by specification. So we talk about the JAX RS, we're talking about something that lives by a Sun slash now, I guess, Oracle specification. Uh, we talk about RESTlet. It's an API provided by an open source project. And so that API is not dictated by any kind of specification. Let me show you one other thing, too, with regard to the RESTlet style. That will give us another appreciation for a bit of a difference. So let me share my desktop with you here in one second, gang. And I'll bring up, uh, this is one of the pages from the RESTlet uh, documentation. And you can see here how, uh, again, in the RESTlet community, they help or use annotations to help dictate how traffic gets routed around. But in the RESTlet community, what you must do is extend server resource as a class in the RESTlet API that allows you to essentially build a server-side RESTlet service that responds to, in this case, request um, under the at get annotation, a get request for what they have as a method called represent, in this case, their hello world example. That uh, gives you a pretty good indication, too, that when we talk about RESTlet style of web services, again, a Java API, yep, and you can still do uh, RESTful style web services, but now you're more or less handcuffing yourself to that particular API since you're requiring your services to be tied to a particular class. You're extending, in this case, a RESTlet class. Some people consider that to be a little bit intrusive and one of the, maybe the downsides of using the RESTlet API. 
not that uh, Jax RS is perfect, and you will certainly see some, some other good features provided through this uh, API that allows you to maybe do more in some cases than what you can do from the Jax RS perspective, but you are now kind of uh, handcuffing yourself, at least to date, handcuffing yourself to that particular API. So it's a matter of whether or not you want to be um, adhering to a specification and or whether or not you want to allow for the uh, the use of plain old Java objects and Java beans without any ties to any other interface or extend any other class. Uh, one last question I'll take here before we uh, get further into the details of our talk here today, and that is uh, I had a request from Rick about how do you get essentially what are the capabilities that a RESTful web service might have? And I'm guessing, Rick, you're kind of going along the lines of is there a WSDL type of uh, exchange like we see in SOAP-based web service? And the answer there will also be one that probably disappoints a little bit today. There are um, kind of homegrown solutions. I've seen lots of organizations essentially develop a web service, a RESTful web service, that provides an understanding of what the capabilities are at that URL. And then you click on the particular links and you get more details about what is available at that particular site or that particular listing. In other words, a resource list. Um, in other cases, people have actually started to look at a, an API that looks something like WSDL, which we'll talk about towards the end of our discussion, that allows for, if you will, information exchange about what the web service is all about without yet communicating with the web service. So in kind of a WSDL-like fashion, a exchange of uh, resource information. We'll talk a bit about that at the conclusion, too, about what an option is there. Something that's still very early and very much um, at the bleeding edge, but there are some uh, opportunities for doing those kinds of things. So great question. So I owe uh, all folks who sent in questions a, a round of thanks, and we'll try to address a few more of those before we head out here this afternoon. With that, let me go ahead and get us back into our talk, and in particular, uh, take us on to look a little bit more detail at the JAX RS API. So uh, right before the break here, we were talking about how simple it is to develop a JAX RS slash Jersey implementation of a RESTful style web service in Java. What do you need? You need the Jersey API, the Jersey jar files. You need to uh, put a, um, a, servlet, uh, a servlet mapping element into your web XML to route everything to the uh, Jersey's adapter servlet. And then from that, provide a POJO with annotations that dictate uh, how it's going to respond to certain URI requests with the at path annotation. And we saw also how to provide methods with things like the at get, at post annotation to react to certain verbs, to react to those RESTful style actions that uh, occur in our RESTful server world. Let's talk about a few of the other annotations then that get us into these details of the RESTful web service world, JAX uh, RS. Um, when we take a look at how JAX RS works by default. By default, all resources are going to return plain text. We kind of saw that in our demo of Hello World, where my little Hello World RESTful web service returned the string and said Hello World. You'll notice that the actual method call had a return type of string. So by default, uh, JAX RS slash Jersey implementation of return plain text by default. However, you could change that by using the at produces annotation, you can specify all sorts of different mind types that you might want to respond with. So, for example, if we wanted to have our Hello World web service, uh, in this case the Hello World resource, return not just plain text, but maybe HTML, then simply annotate that with app produces text HTML. You can do that at the class level, or as we'll see with a lot of these annotations, you can also override the class level by method. In other words, put the app produces annotation on a method. So in this case, say hello, we'll return a string, put a string in, um, in this case, text plain versus what's going to return maybe by other methods in HTML format, given the app produces annotation at the class level. You can offer multiple line types. In other words, per method, say for example on say hello, we can say hello in plain text, or we can also say hello in text HTML. And we can offer many methods that offer other outputs, in this case, producing JSON from the, say, JSON hello method. If it's mind type, it can be specified by the app produces mechanism. Now, that's not to say that your particular method or your particular resource knows all about JSON or knows all about how to respond to JSON. 
it's up to you to provide the mechanisms to respond in the right type. In other words, it's per that method that you need to be able to respond in that type. However, as we'll learn, JAX-RS provides a great deal of capability and add-on APIs that allow us to respond in, say, something like XML and JSON very easily, allowing us to use something that probably many of you are familiar with if you've done SOAP-based web services, and that's jax -B to help us or allow us to respond in different types without much effort on our part. We'll come back to that in just a second. For more free learning resources and to see the latest lineup of our instructor-led .NET, Java, and XML courses, visit us at www.intertech.com.